In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up a corn planter configuration for a Kinsey corn planter that is 12 rows with 11 rows inner plants. So it's a 12-23 planter. We want to do planter monitoring only on this Kinsey. We're going to hit the add button. We're going to go ahead and add a new configuration now. So we hit the plus or the add button again. This time we're telling it that we're choosing a planting configuration. We're going to use the Case IH-190. We need to add a new implement, so we're going to hit the Add. And we're going to tell it that we have a planter. The planter is a rear draw bar. You also have the option for three-point hitch. And the planter monitor, you either have the option to choose none or to choose a monitor. What we're wanting to do with this is do monitoring only and recording of the seed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to tell it it is a Kinsey planter monitor module. If we were doing anything else that had Dickey John sensors on it, like a white or a John Deere or an older style like a 2600 Kinsey, we would tell it that we want to do seed monitor module instead of the Kinsey planter monitoring module. But since we're doing a Kinsey 3600, we want to have the Kinsey planter monitor module. The other thing that we want to do is we want to tell it that we want to enable the split rows. So we hit the check mark on enable split rows. Once you have that set, it also wants to know do we want to do planter section control. We don't on this planter, so we leave that turned off. Now it wants to know how many rows do we have. Well, we're doing a 12 row 30 inch spacing. But wait, what we really have is 23 rows. And they're 15 inch spacing. So we have our planter set up for 23 rows, 15 inch spacing, and you'll notice our swath is 28.75 feet. That is because we're only taking 23 rows instead of 24. So we're going to have to set up a configuration for corn and for soybeans because the corn planter is only going to have 12 rows and they're going to be 30 inches. We're not going to be monitoring the other 20, 11 rows. So at this point, we'll go ahead and hit next. So we're setting up the bean calibration now. Now it wants to know how many implement sections. Well, we're going to do two implement sections based on the fact that we can shut off the right hand side and the left hand side with our point row clutch. So we'll do two implement sections. Wants to know how many rows are on each section. So you need to figure out which section or which side of the planter shuts off that row that's in the middle on our soybeans. And then you need to make sure that one of them has 11 sections and one of them has 12 sections. So what we find out these rows are from left to right, and the left section, when we went and looked at our corn planter, had that middle row attached. So we're highlighting section one, and we're going to tell it it is 12 rows, and we need to make 11 on section two, because the left half of the planter is actually driving that center row. So you need to make sure that you pay attention to that and see which side of the planter is actually driving that row. Now we'll go ahead and hit next here. Wants to know our distance from the hitch to area of application. It was 23.7 feet. And hit next. Wants to know the implement name. And we're going to say Kinsey Bean Planter. And we can only get plants, so Kinsey Bean Plant. Uh, accepted the name. And we'll go in here and it wants to know what type of uh, operation are we doing? Are we doing rate and logging control? No, we're not doing, we're not controlling the rate. What we're doing is site verification only, so we're just recording what happens. So we tell it we want to do area logging site verification. Wants to know how many varieties. Now in order to choose more than one variety, we have to the Integra monitor the unlock for the multi-product. So if you don't have multi-product, this won't come up and ask you if you want more than one variety. Since this monitor has multi-product, we're going to go ahead and tell it it is a two variety split. So we can split the planter in half and keep track of different seed in one half or the other half. Wants to know any additional application equipment. We're not going to do anything with that, so we're just going to hit the next button. 
Now again, it wants to know your ground speed source, which is GPS, with a backup is radar. And then now it wants to know the suggested name for the configuration. So Kinsey uh, 190 Kinsey Bean Planter. So now we'll hit the check mark and we'll go ahead and, and we're done with that configuration to this point. However, we still need to go in and we need to manage this bean planter. So we want to highlight it, hit manage equipment. And then we want to go to the implement and we want to find our bean planter. Um, we need to configure the seed monitor. So we highlight the bean planter, hit seed monitor. So we're going to go in and set up our configuration for the planter. It wants to know how rear units are 12. And then front units are 11. Now it wants to know, do we have any um, shaft RPM sensors? And we're going to tell it, yes, we have two. Um, next thing it wants to know the row spacing. So we're going to say 15 inches. And pretty much if we had any other sensors like down pressure, oil sensor, air comp, SDS, the tank pressure or tank weight, we could pick those on as well. But this particular planter does not have any of those. We don't have any edge back sensors. But what we're doing in here is we're Integra, what we're looking for when we go out to the planter. So now we hit OK, and it's going to tell us that this is going to require a MUX bus detection. Do you want to continue? We're going to hit the uh, check mark and say yes. All right. So now it's going out and it's checking all of our sensors and making sure that they're plugged in. So it went down through the planter and it checked to see that everything that we told it that is on the planter is actually there. And everything passed, so we hit OK. Now we can go ahead and, and then we want to go in and do our sensor configuration. So on this, we go in and we tell it we want to install the sensors. So what it wants you to do is unplug all of your sensors and then it's going to start with the rear row sensors from left to right. Each sensor has a serial number. In this unit, the Integra is going out and it's checking. It saw all the sensors and all the sensors were working, but it doesn't know where those sensors are on the machine. So we want to go in and we tell it install. We start plugging row one, then plug in row two, row three, row four. Once we get through all 12 rows on the back, then it wants us to do our front row sensors. So then we'll start plugging in row 1 on the front, or 13, then row 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, 23, until we have all 23 sensors detected. Then the third step is it's going to have us plug in our transmission speed sensors. So you'll start with the transmission speed sensor on the left, then the right transmission speed sensor. Then we're going to be done. If you had any other sensors like ground speed pickups, you'd put it in next. Or if you had any auxiliary sensors like the seed delivery system sensors or the edge vac sensors or pneumatic down pressure, it would follow with those. So what we can do is hit install and start plugging in. We can't really do that since we're on a simulator, but this is where you would do it. We're going to go ahead and hit the OK button. The next thing and the final thing is to set up your alarms. So highlight the alarms, and then you can tell it, do you want these to be at 10%, 50%, 70%, or disable a row. Since we don't have any sensors detected, they're not showing up here, but you can choose to set all the rows to give you an alarm at 70%, or you can hit the typewriter or the calculator and put in 90% if you want. So if it gets lower than 90%, it gives you an alarm. Or you can go in and set each individual row differently. If you have one row that a sensor is going bad and it's not figuring, um, you know, it's beeping all the time, you can just disable that sensor so it's not alarming you all the time. But this is where you actually set your seed monitor alarms. Go ahead and make those changes, hit OK, and you're done. So that's pretty much everything you need to do to set up that monitor configuration.